Welcome everyone to foreign community demo number 147. This is where we catch up on the community's recent progress and accomplishments. My name is Anita and I'll be hosting the demo today. You can ask questions in the chat here or over in the matrix room, the foreman. And it looks like we only have one uh, item for today, and that's Jeremy's multi-content view activation keys feature. So without further ado, Jeremy, please, what do you have for us? All right, so uh, yeah, let me share my screen here. And uh, hopefully can, everyone can see my screen. My terminal should be showing right now. Uh, if not, someone please let me know. But uh, OK, hey, everyone, I'm Jeremy from the Catello team. And today I am talking to you about multi-content view activation keys. So uh, in my previous demo, I showed that uh, I told you that hosts are no longer assigned content view and lifecycle environments separately. Rather, you can assign hosts one or more content view environments. Uh, and that as per the last demo, this is possible both from the host and via hammer commands. Uh, but the thing about that was for host registration, that was only supported via subscription manager commands. And that's really not how most people register. Most people use activation keys and global registration because that's what is supported. So now activation keys can be assigned multiple content view environments just like hosts. And uh, this also means that global registration is now supported. So you can run through your whole flow with multi, uh, multiple content view environments. So how do we assign multiple content view environments to an activation key? Uh, well, it's just like you would think. It's a hammer activation key update. And then we pass in a content view environments uh, parameter. So it's content view environments. And then it's a comma separated list. But how do we get the correct values here? Well, we've also added a new hammer command, which is hammer content view environment list. I think I have to put an organization ID up there. Uh, but anyway, when you when you do this uh, content view environment list, it will give you a list of all of the content view environments. Uh, so all of your options to pass in here. And uh, as we recall, a content view environment is simply a combination of a particular lifecycle environment and content view that has been promoted to that environment. Uh, and so what we're interested in here is the uh, labels. Uh, so I think the, um, yeah, the activation, the uh, content view environment I wanna add is this number two here. So, uh, so let's go, uh, Let's go back to my hammer activation key update. I think I still have to pass an organization ID always. And then, all right, so I'm gonna pass in two of them here. So we're gonna do LCE1, CV1, and LCE2, CV2. And that's updated. We can now verify that with a couple commands here. So hammer activation key list. You can see we've added some new columns to the list view here. We now have, instead of separate content view and lifecycle environment columns, we now have content view environments. And you can see that activation key that I just updated here. Uh, you can see the uh, labels listed in the same order that I passed them. And we can also see that it's multi-content view environment. Uh, we've also updated the info. So you can see the same sort of thing in a little bit more detail. Uh, so for this activation key here, you can see all of the content view environments in great detail here. Uh, but you can also see that list of labels uh, as well, which is really handy. Uh, 
for knowing what to pass in. Now, in certain situations, ordering is actually really important. So um, that's another reason why it's, it's handy, because this actually shows the order in which they're assigned to the activation key. And if I want to change that, I can also use that update command. So if I pass them in a different order, let's try two and then one. Oh, uh, what did I, oh, I put a space. I can't put a space. It's gotta be a comma separated list with no spaces. All right, so now if I go back to my info command and I look at that activation key again, we see that it's now in that other order, two and then one. Uh, so that's what you can do now in the terminal, uh, content view environment list, new command, and then uh, new information on activation key info and activation key list. Now switching over to our uh, web UI here, if we go to uh, activation keys page here, you can see we've added a new column here that says whether it's multi-content view environment. And then when you go in and click on one of the activation keys that is multi-environment, uh, we show them here in the same order. Uh, we've kind of, uh, kind of slapped on some new UI on top of this old Angular JS page here, which was fun. Um, so one thing about this is that you can you can view things in the web UI, but you cannot yet change things. So there is a little warning banner here that says if you want to change this, use hammer. Um, now if you are using the experimental labs activation key details page, We'll also show the content view environments card there as well. And then uh, I said earlier that this uh, allows it to, to work with global registration. So I wanna show that briefly. Um, this link is really cool, by the way. I think not enough people know about this, but if, if you're on the activation key details page and you click this link here, it takes you directly to the registration page with that activation key filled in, which I think is neat. But anyway, the thing that's new that we've added here is that it now shows the activation keys content view environments right in the drop down here, including if it has multiple or if it doesn't have any of them. You can see that right in the drop down here. And so uh, I can go ahead and generate the registration command. I'm gonna go ahead and register a host here with my multi-environment activation key. So let's go back to my terminal, uh, paste my registration command. And once the registration completes, I can confirm from the host what environments are assigned to it. With this subscription manager environments. And we can see that those multiple environments got assigned to the host through that activation key in the same order that they were on the activation key. Uh, so that is what's new with the uh, multi-content view feature. Activation keys fully works now. Um, coming in a third iteration of the feature is uh, more web UI stuff and making it work with host groups. However, if you have host groups you want to use this with now, um, you know, remember you can assign activation keys to host groups too, and that should work just fine. Um, and I see we might have a question here. Does it depend on a specific subman version? Uh, good question. Yes, it does. But this um, feature has been around in Kendallpin and subman for long enough that you shouldn't have to worry about it. 
uh, Catello was actually pretty late in implementing this feature, and it's uh, it's been available. Uh, the underlying multiple environments has been available in Candlepin for uh, several years now, I think. Um, so yeah, no no worries about that. I don't know the specific version, but any reasonably modern version of Subman should work fine. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much. Uh, it for today, you've now got two ways to allow hosts access to content from multiple content views. You've got this, which I just showed you, and you've got composite content views. So uh, you, you may be wondering which one to use, um, and it's up to you. You can use either, both, or neither. Um, but a few things to keep in mind, uh, if you are using a procedure or your, your organization has a thing where you, you uh, are publishing composite content views like dozens or hundreds of times a day, it may help to switch over to using multiple content view environments instead, because uh, you can reduce that publish frequency. Um, another thing to keep in mind is with composite content views, you're able to choose which content view version to use in each of your underlying content views. And with this, you can't do that. It always uses the latest version of whatever environment you sign, assign to the host. Uh, and then also repository conflicts are dealt with slightly differently, um, but that's getting into some pretty nitty gritty technical stuff. Happy to answer any questions about that in more detail if we get them. Uh, but yeah, that is activation keys, multi-content view environments and uh, happy to answer any questions as always. We have one more question in the chat. Is username and password always required? Um, oh yeah, for that subscription manager environments dash dash list enabled, I believe it will always be required. Yeah, if you're doing it from the host. Um, Hammer, it's not required. Great, right. thank you, Jeremy. Do we have any more questions? It doesn't look like it, so thanks again, Jeremy. And that was it for today's demo. So next demo is scheduled for November the 14th. And if you would like to perhaps uh, share a topic of your own, it really is just as easy as going to the demo event page on the Community Fullman uh, website and adding your name and your topic to the agenda. So if you have anything to share, feel free to do just that. And with that, I believe we are done for today. So thank you for attending and thank you, Jeremy, again for presenting your topic. Thanks, everyone.